With us now, Democratic Representative from New York, Congressman Anthony Weiner. Good to have you back. So what happened to the Patriots? I missed that. Oh, uh, wow. Where are they? Wow. Are they oh, wow. Where are they? They come down slapping me around I'm right just away. Saying, I'm just saying, uh, you know, if I'm coming on here talking about the Jets, Jeez, I'm sure. Just, uh, <laughs> hey, that would be good. No, I've got to tell you, the best thing about this race, we get to hear Dropkick Murphys, we get to hear the Mighty Mighty Boston, yeah. all these Massachusetts yeah. acts, we get to see them at the top of the show. Now. Yeah, and, uh, well. Emphasize the positive. There you go. Well yeah, done. Exactly. So go Jets. Okay. Can't, you can't complain about that. Yeah. Right. So, so we're, we're going to talk to Anthony Weiner about what happens next uh, with health care if, in fact, is everybody in Boston saying Coakley's going to lose? What happens in Washington, D.C.? Right. Exactly. Opportunity for a historic upset. The question is, what happens in Washington afterward? And, and Anthony, uh, are you surprised by what you're seeing up in Massachusetts? Well, yes and no. I mean, no in that it's an ugly time out there for all incumbents. It's a tough time because people are insecure. They're not 100% sure what we're doing in Washington is the right thing. There's general sense that the country is on the wrong is that, is, that a, is that a mistake that the Democrats have made? Is it mainly, and I don't want to fall on that crutch that, oh, it's communication. We're doing great stuff. We're not communicating it. But has the message been too muddled from Democrats on health care? Well, I, I haven't liked it. You know, I've come on with you guys, and I think that we should have been much clearer about just growing things that work, you know, saying taking Medicare. We understand and that works. It was a democratic initiative. Let's expand it some. Let's expand it five years or something like that. But, like, but, you've but said, the, for instance, Medicare for all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that that has been messaged very well. And I also think the way we've that the president's chosen to legislate, let the Senate and the House work its will, that by definition is an unclear thing and it's muddled and the like. But I also think something else. That, I mean, look, we're doing tough things. You're doing health care, no matter who did it, it, you're going to take a lot of lumps for it. And I think that you can critique how it was done, but there's no doubt about it. The president's trying to solve the, pro the problems of the American people. The problem that we have here is this re reminds a lot of us more and more of 1993. You know, the president is doing incrementally good things, but we in Congress are taking our lumps every step of the way while we're doing it. And I also think that, you know, when people who are against things are always more animated than people who are for things. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a lot of headwinds. I mean, I don't want to do a post-mortem until there's a mortem. Right. Yeah. The word. Right. I, I don't, this could be know, New Hampshire. You, you never know. You know, another race closer Absolutely. to home for Anthony. Let's turn to New York politics, where a new poll shows Senator Kirsten Gillibrand dominating Harold Ford Jr. in a potential matchup for the Democratic primary. According to polling from the Siena Research Institute, Gillibrand is ahead of Ford 41% to 17 percent. Ford's camp would point to a lack of name recognition, with 63 percent saying they don't know enough about him. While Ford hasn't even decided on whether or not he'll run, he does have some tough words for his potential opponent, saying Gillibrand is, quote, weak in many places across the state. Anthony, uh, what, what's going on in this race? Does Harold Ford have a shot? Well, I, I like Harold. The, the, the problem is I haven't heard a rationale for why he's running. I mean, he started out the race saying, I'm not going to be a rubber stamp for Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer. Well, that's a strange way to campaign. I'm not going to support the senior senator. I'm not going to be the reliable 60th vote. Look, I, I, I hope, I mean, he's got every right to run. I hope that he decides not to. I mean, we want to try to have as, much, as, as many resources available in other races. Is Gillibrand weak? Gillibrand hasn't been on the ballot statewide, so by definition, until she is, until people get into the habit of voting for her, until she's, she gets better known, um, I'm supporting her. I, I, I think she's, she's done a great job. The problem that someone has to answer for me is why is Harold... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But but here are her said... numbers, really quickly. Her favorable, favorability numbers, only 30%, 32% unfavorable, 38% don't even know in Pataki. Uh, George Pataki blows her out in a head-to-head -head matchup in this same poll. And she said, you know, a year from now, you will know who I am. And I don't really think that's happened, do you? It never does. I mean, honestly, no one ever becomes well-known until they stand on a ballot, until they start having a, a campaign. And, and, I, and that, that's going to happen. Look, she, to some degree, is coming into the worst possible dynamic. She was appointed. She was appointed by an unelected governor. And she was appointed at a time where being an incumbent is a particularly great thing. But every single time that New York has needed her, she's been there and voted right. Mm. And in all of the critique I've seen from Harold Ford, and by the way, you know, the guy was the runner-up in Tennessee. I'm not sure that we need to turn to the second choice of Tennesseans or Tennesseeites or Spoken, Tennesseans. Spoken <laughs> like a true New Yorker. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but I, 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 I like him. I, I mean, I, th I think there's nothing wrong. It sounds like you, you know. like him. <laughs> no, he and I are, he and I are, 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 are buddies, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about going down to, to, to Tennessee and getting my twang on and see if I can run down there. Maybe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Woo, boy, yeah. They're going to love you in Chattanooga. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh,
I, yeah. I don't see us doing that. Would, this, would, you, this, would you today? I have a very it, difficult time. Would you vote for the Senate? I have bill? a very difficult time doing that. I'd have to be. Uh, I, I'd have to get some kind of assurance that tomorrow we're going to get 15 things changed in it, and that's not usually the way legislation. No, it does. I mean, you yeah. know, I, I, you know, I, the Senate bill is a worse bill. There's, there's no doubt about it. I think most people agree with that, and even the House bill, we made a lot of compromises from where someone. So, like Mike, if Brown wins, uh, health care wow. is dead. Uh, apparently so. Apparently yeah. it's you know on life support, no pun intended. But let me ask you a question for all the boys and girls out there about to head off to school. When I was growing up, you take the history and the civics courses. I always thought in the United States Senate, 51 votes, you win. Yeah. you pass the bill. The bill gets signed into yeah. law. What has happened? What is this 60 uh, I, I, I Look, I have no idea. But, but what I don't know about the Politburo that is the United States Senate could fill a book. But I got to tell you, at somewhere we've lost track of the idea. It's you know, it's 50. It's a, I mean, I put majority rules in this country. We have gotten so inert to the idea that you need 60 votes that <laughs> any one senator can now stop this. So what have we done the last several months? We're held hostage by Olympia Snow, by Joe Lieberman, by Senator Nelson, and now by this guy Brown. If this guy Brown, he's essentially now we're voting on whether or not to let health care move forward. Wow. Yeah. Congressman Weiner, thank you so much Thanks. for being here. Yeah. Fascinating. And uh, before we go to break, just something.